Hey guys, welcome to Cat's Classics. My name's Cat. This is part one of a series that I'm doing where I refurbish the engine of my 1967 Ford Mustang. The goal for the series is to walk you guys through how I refurbish my engine without needing to pull it out and do an entire engine rebuild. The goal for today's video is to remove the spark plugs and the spark plug cables and then run a compression test to figure out what condition my engine is actually in. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoy. Don't forget to leave a like and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. With that being said, I think we're ready to get started. I'm starting off by removing my air filter and the old spark plug and spark plug cables. I do have headers on this engine and I did need to remove those in order to reach my cylinder 7 spark plug. So as I suspected, pretty much all of my spark plugs came out with quite a bit of carbon buildup. I did know that this engine was running pretty rich, so I will also be showing you guys how to tune a two barrel Edelbrock carburetor in my next video. I also wanted to point out that I do have oil on the threads of my spark plugs. That could mean a number of different things. Performing the compression test today is gonna be a big help in figuring out what that is. So this is a compression test gauge. All you have to do is thread this into the spot where the spark plug came out of and check each cylinder. You're gonna watch this dial bounce. It's gonna bounce up about five times before you write down the value of the compression in that cylinder. Generally speaking, you want your compression in your engine to be above 130 PSI. Honestly, I'm just looking for any numbers that are below 100 is gonna be what, what tells me if there's something wrong in that cylinder. Oh, no. Also, if you're doing this job yourself, you're gonna need to get a remote starting button. All you have to do is hook this up to the starter solenoid and then press the button and it'll turn the engine over without you having to actually turn the key. So this part right here is my ignition coil. We're going to have to disconnect this completely before we run the compression test. You might notice that I have this little wire here. I actually disconnected that because it's for my electric tack and sometimes it pulls so much power from the ignition that the car won't start. So all you have to do to disconnect this is remove these wires here. That sucks. It's also a good habit to pin open the throttle and choke and keep a fire extinguisher nearby when you're doing a job like this. Here I'm using a little beaded cable tie as an extra safety precaution. All you have to do to reset the gauge is just press this button on the side and it falls back to zero. So I've just tested cylinder five, so I made a little chart. And next to cylinder five, I put the pressure that I got in test one. I'm gonna test it two more times before moving on to the next cylinder. So I finished jotting down the compression numbers for each of my eight cylinders and all of them were good save for cylinder seven, which had a compression reading of 90 PSI. So what I'm gonna do now is pour just a little bit of oil into cylinder seven and that's gonna tell me whether or not it's my piston ring that's failing. Basically the oil creates a temporary seal around the piston ring and if the compression reading goes up the second time I do the compression test, I'll be able to tell for certain what's causing the compression in that cylinder. All right, now that I've poured a little bit of oil into cylinder seven, I'll be able to run the compression test again and figure out whether or not I have a piston ring problem. Immediately, I'm getting 120. So that tells me that there is an issue with the piston ring in cylinder seven, and that's why I'm losing compression. So now that I've figured out exactly what's causing low compression, I have kind of a choice to make. Either I pull out the engine and I do a rebuild and replace all the piston rings, which is really the only way to fix this problem, or I go in with some sort of engine repair additive and pour that into my oil, and that should at least help address the problem until I'm able to fix it later on. I think that I'm gonna go with that choice because I would like to 
eventually swap the engine in this car with something else. And then while I have that engine in the car, I'd like to rebuild this one. That way I can put a little bit more time and patience into it. I'm using the Bars Leaks brand. I've heard pretty good things about it online. Supposedly this stuff is gonna be able to stop leaks inside the engine for a period of time before I'm able to actually rebuild the engine like I'd like to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and comment and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. I'm gonna be back very soon with part two of this series where I replace the valve covers and perform a valve adjustment on my 289. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.